It's Tuesday. It's uh, every other Tuesday, and that means it's time to talk with Dr. Jamie Ronchetto from Cinema Veterinary Center, located in beautiful uh, downtown Valencia on Cinema Drive. Uh, cinemavet.com, of course, the number 253-9300. And I want to talk today, because I've been getting into, I just had a birthday, so usually it's like the milestone. Okay, I need to get into some sort of shape and make sure that my clothes are fitting, because you get to that point, it's like, I don't want to buy the fat guy clothes again, and <laughs> I, I really can't afford to. So I've been starting to think, though, about pets, our dogs and cats, and, and their levels of fitness as well. And you mentioned... Uh, uh, off the air that, that some of your patients don't realize that their pets are overweight. Right. Yeah. And so what is it that at first thing, first it is obviously from maybe the look perspective, but how is it that should, should we all be checking to see what the average weight of our pets are first? Or what is it that we, how is it that we can tell or what I should say, what changes our mindset from not thinking that they're overweight to realizing they're overweight? Yeah, well, it's hard because um, I think just as an American culture, you know, most of our pets, as well as most of us, are overweight. And so, you know, they see all these other pets that all look the same, so they think that's normal. But really, they're all just a, a little bit chubby, a little bit overweight. Um, you certainly can go by the actual weight that they are, but everybody's a little bit different. Um, what I tend to go by more is body condition scoring, and that is really easy to do because you want to, um, when you're looking at your pet, whether it's a dog or a cat, from above, if they're you know standing on the floor in front of you, you want to be able to see that they have a little bit of a waist. So they should have a little bit of an hourglass figure, um, and you when you put your hands on them, you want to be able to feel ribs fairly easily, not, you know, have them protruding and sticking out, but if there's a layer of fat there and you really have to press to find those ribs, then then they might need to lose a little bit of weight. Right. And so uh, just like us, when we get a little bit pear-shaped, you yeah. know, the same thing. <laughs> so so yes. let's talk a little bit about fitness then, because you don't want to get, get them, uh, some people are, are crazy enough to take their dogs out in the middle of the day or run up in uh, Towsley Canyon or, or really right. push them too hard. But they're like us. They If we want to get them to a certain point, depending upon also the type of breed too. Yes. Uh, but we, we also want to kind of ramp it up, right? You don't Absolutely. just want to get out there and you know if you're a, a marathon runner and you realize you're a little dachshund's a little overweight you don't want to ch- take them on a 26 mile run absolutely right? that would that would be terrible so if they're couch potatoes you know and they're not used to exercising you want to take baby steps just like we would you know a little bit at a time um certainly different breeds will like different things so if they like water then you know if they have water access swimming is great exercise and um you just want to make sure that they're doing it safely you know if it seems like they're struggling a little bit but they're enjoying it maybe get them a little life vest so to help them with buoyancy and and swimming is great because there's no um stress on the joints and it helps with mobility and all of that that's great um Hiking can be good for your pets as well, your dogs, if they're used to that kind of strenuous exercise. So again, a little bit at a time and certainly not taking them out when it's really hot because they can get overheated and bring water and just be very aware of their body language and, and, you know, making sure you take frequent breaks for them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because they tend to, like in my dogs, they'll just sit down. Okay, we're done. (laughs) Or I could tell also when they go to the grass and they start rolling around on the grass, they're trying to cool down. So those are things like, okay, let's give them a little bit of a break. Let's talk a little bit about about dietary uh, needs. Sometimes we we will free feed our dogs and our cats and not think about it or give them the treats. It's always like, especially when, when I know that like if, if we have people dog sitting, I know that they've given them treats because every time I sit down to eat, all of a sudden they want something. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but treats and human food, of course, are things that, that we really need to kind of stay away from, right? Exactly. I mean, treats, everything in moderation. Um, if you're really trying to be aware of what they're eating and trying to get them to lose weight, then um, dogs especially, not so much cats, but dogs... Um, good treats can be just like carrots and green beans and you know different veggies like that Um, they get the little bit of a crunch and it can be a little bit sweet and so sometimes that works really well if you have a very finicky dog it might not work so well Um, i found dogs don't like lettuce at all but some other some of the other green things they like some they don't but like our dogs love 
love uh, apple, apples apples and, work and well. some yep. carrots and sometimes some of them like carrots but don't give them grapes because you don't know different dogs react to different uh, things right like, right yes grapes and raisins are right. no no mm-hmm. so keep that in mind so and then with cats though too because there are various sizes of cats i notice and yes. uh, it's sometimes tough to tell just the big bruiser cat versus someone who's uh, a cat is actually overweight is it kind of the same thing with the the kind rib of check same thing with the body condition scoring yeah you want to be able to feel ribs fairly easily there are some cats that are just large and that's their breed um but there are other cats that are overweight you know again the couch potato kitties they're indoor only and they're free fed and they just keep filling the bowl and they have no idea how much they really are eating and they don't really want to do much you know uh, and there are exercise toys and things you can get from them I, absolutely I, they have that little thing now that's got the little uh it, it's like a little mechanical thing and it's got like what it, it's round the and it's got little spins around it and yeah, spins. They, yeah. They, so things like that just getting them out there that right. works well laser laser pointers work oh, yeah. well those, those, are chase so those much kinds fun. of things yeah. just so much fun they fall for it every time yeah. <laughs> that is so much fun just getting up getting a little bit of exercise getting just like we do just get them out there perfect yes. Uh, Dr. Jamie Ronchetto, Cinema Veterinary Center, located on Cinema Drive, uh, cinemavet.com for directions, also contact information. You can call them directly, 253-9300. Yep. Uh, see, it's all starting to work <laughs> good. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank Always you. a pleasure.